A few days ago, a company called CodeCrafters messaged me and asked me, hey, would you like to try our coding platform? And I said, yeah, f*** it, why not? So today, I'll be putting myself through all circles of hell to make my own server in plain C. That's right, now C++, we don't need classes or stupid ass syntax, just good old C. Now this is a sponsored video, but I'll be doing my best to express my opinions about the platform. So if you want to try CodeCrafters by yourself, there's an affiliate link in the description, and depending on when you watch the video, there will be a new free challenge each week for you to try. Okay, so after setting up the project, I realized that there was a lot of placeholder code that I just didn't understand. I'm somewhat familiar with C, but I've never programmed networking with it. So I spent 4 hours reading about every function I could find and commenting every single line of code. At this point, I just have some simple code that creates a socket, binds the socket to a port, and then waits for incoming connections. And with all that done, I'm ready for the real first step in this whole process. Respond with 200. Now for those of you who don't speak HTTP, this just means that we'll be sending a test message to our server, and if our request is successfully processed by it, we will get this as an answer. Pretty straightforward, right? So all I have to do is to format my response like this, with the appropriate serial of serial whatever this thing is, otherwise the world's gonna end or something, and send the response with this function appropriately named send. And after doing that, we push our code, and all the tests should pass. Yay, let's continue. Step 1 was pretty simple, just a warm-up. Now step 2 is still pretty simple. All we gotta do now is respond with 404 if the path is any other than the root. So for example, if I try to access the root, I should get 200. But if I try to access fuck you bitch, which is not defined, I should get 404. To do this, we just have to parse the path again using this function here that I'm not gonna try to pronounce and check if the path is either home or something else. And that's it. Step 3 is when things start to become a bit problematic. You see, our task now is to parse the path from the HTTP request that will contain a random string and attach that string to the body of the response. So we need to keep track of both the path that we're checking and the string that we want to echo. But because working with strings in C is so stupidly complicated, we have to be very careful with the pointers and all that stupid shit. With that done, we should be able to get this. Now following our previous steps, we have to continue parsing stuff. As you can see, my server is just a bunch of parsing being held together by poorly written code. Whatever. For this step, we have to get the user agent from the request header, parse it, and then respond with it whenever the user accesses the URL user agent. Now user agent is just a header that allows the server to identify the application that it's trying to access. I'm not gonna lie, I had no idea how to proceed with this step, so I decided to look at the guide that the site offers. Now here's the thing, CodeCrafters has guides for a bunch of different programming languages. However, C is what you might call an experimental feature, which means that these guides might not always be fully accurate, or they might just simply be wrong. With that mentioned, I have to say that it was actually quite useful. It's not 100% right, you still have to do some research in order to understand what you need to do, but come on, things can be so easy. Especially in C. Anyway, all we gotta do now is to fucking parse more things until I get the desired parameters that I need for the response. And ta-da! Now we correctly respond with the user agent that the sent the request... What the fuck did I just say? Now we correctly respond with the user agent that sent the request. If you have ever thought about how the internet works, you might have noticed that a server that just responds to one connection is not very useful. Therefore, we need to introduce concurrency. And I have no fucking clue how to do this in C. So I think I look at other code examples. Yeah, so apparently everyone here is a fucking tryhard, and they make stupidly complicated code. So I just don't get any of this. But whatever. Anyway, after trying for a few hours to understand multi-threading, I gave up. But I saw this guy's code that uses fork to create sub-processes to account for concurrency, so don't mind if I do. Okay, done. Next step. The final two circles of this server hell involve reading and posting files to the server. Why in that order? I don't know. To me, it makes more sense to post the file first and then program the logic to read it, but whatever. So here's what I will do. First, to post the file, we just gotta make sure that again, we're in the correct path by doing a cringe amount of manual parsing. See, I thought this project was gonna be more interesting to showcase, but it's like 90% parsing at this point. I know some snarky programmers in the comments are gonna be like, hey, but you could just like make a function to parse the data and use a while loop and you don't have to blah blah blah. Shut the fuck up, I don't care, this is not Java. And then we just have to open the file and write the comment. And that's it! Now for reading the file, we have to do the same thing. But instead of opening the file and writing the content, we just have to open the file and reading the content. It all sounds super stupid when you say it like that, but it's actually pretty simple, it's just 10 lines of code. Now we can test our server by sending this request that will create a file. And now if I try to get the file, it should appear on my screen. And I downloaded it? Huh. I wasn't expecting that. Whatever. We managed to successfully create a server in plain C. 
no extensions, no third-party libraries, not a single neuron working in this brain. We can post data, we can get data, and we can... That's all we can do for now. It's pretty rudimentary, but it's something. And that's pretty much it. I struggled way more than I showcased with the video because it would not be fun to tell you how I spent 4 hours reading documentation just to solve a stupid bug, but nonetheless, I really enjoyed coding this and it was especially helpful since I'm having an embedded systems course now and I had to refresh my C knowledge a bit. So don't forget to try CodeCrafters and use my affiliate link if you want to. I really like the site and they're working on adding more challenges in the near future, so it all looks very interesting for now. And if you made it this far, thanks again for watching the video.